What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is the controversy around Amina Khan. Amina is a popular British beauty blogger. She made national headlines last week. She became the first woman in a hijab to become part of a mainstream hair care ad. And you may have seen it. She was featured in a video for L'Oreal UK's newest hair care line, El Vive. It was a campaign that featured a diverse cast of women with different hairstyles. When the news became public, many were thrilled, saying this was so inclusive, that it was about representation. Others saying it made no sense, L'Oreal's pandering, she's not even showing her hair in the ad. And so that was the debate around this story for several days, but then it took a turn. A few days after it was announced, the Daily Caller uncovered multiple anti-Israel tweets from her account dating back to 2014. We'll read some of them here and link to all of them down below. Remember, the brutal murder of Palestinians has been occurring many years before the formation of Hamas. Israel's excuses are blatant lies. Under international law, Israel is an illegal state, yet you support them. Israel is a sinister state. In a question to David Cameron, do you staunchly support Israel's actions in terrorizing innocent civilians? David Cameron, you want to put an end to terrorism, yet you're complicit in the supplying of weapons to a terrorist state. Hashtag stop arming Israel. Israel equals Pharaoh. Both are child murderers. And so after this came out, there was massive backlash against her and L'Oreal. Following all of this, I'm going to release a statement. I deeply regret the content of the tweets I made in 2014 and sincerely apologize for the upset and hurt that they have caused. Championing diversity is one of my passions. I don't discriminate against anyone. I have chosen to delete them as they do not represent the message of harmony that I stand for. I recently took part in a campaign, which excited me because it's celebrated inclusivity. With deep regret, I've decided to step down from this campaign because the current conversations surrounding it detract from the positive and inclusive sentiment that it set out to deliver. A spokesperson for L'Oreal then said, We appreciate that Amina has apologized for the content of these tweets and the offense they have caused. L'Oreal Paris is committed to tolerance and respect towards all people. We agree with her decision to step down from the campaign. But then that angered a lot of people who were supportive of Khan. British journalist Sunday Handal tweeting, A British Muslim woman has been hounded out from an ad campaign for being critical of Israel. So criticizing countries is racist now? Where are those defenders of free speech now? And Media Diversified tweeting, Another situation where women of color are good enough to front a campaign until they have an opinion, then all hell breaks loose. And so with all of that said, I want to pass the question off to you. What, what are your thoughts on this? Do you think it makes sense she's not part of the campaign anymore? No, she should have stayed on. Should something she have said four years ago still go against her? Also this year, I feel like we're gonna have more stories in some way kind of like this coming out. I mean, just last week, there was a similar story in almost this exact same space. It was with Revlon. The beauty brand wanted to give a change maker award to a Muslim woman from Muslim girl.com, but she ended up actually turning it down because Gal Gadot is a brand ambassador for them. Saying in a statement, I cannot accept this award from Revlon with Gal Gadot as the ambassador. Her vocal support of the Israeli Defense Forces actions in Palestine goes against MuslimGirl.com's morals and values. And so I'm just pointing that out because it's not like this is a unique situation, nor will it be a rare situation. But that said, let me know what you think. Then, very quickly, and I'll just knock this out of the way, there have been a lot of people asking me about the return of Logan Paul. After all the outrage and backlash from the general public around his suicide video, his just actions in Japan in general. YouTube suspending his YouTube Red series, dropping him from Google Preferred, having to change how Google Preferred ads are even run. It was known that Logan Paul would be returning soon. This thanks to his father, who is saying the haters can't get Logan down. It's now widely believed that he's returning Wednesday. I don't know if that's true. But in the past 24 hours, we've seen that there is the groundwork for a Logan Paul return, thanks to his brother Jake Paul, releasing a video called YouTube Let's Talk About Brother Logan Paul. And then in the last two minutes of the video, he says, I think what Logan did was very, very, very wrong and, and he made a, a huge mistake and not only is he paying for it um, but he I I is learning from it and and I think that in no way shape or form is suicide a joke or should it should be made fun of said he didn't uh, mean to offend or, or hurt anybody or or create such a, a uh, a big frustration and he is honestly truly truly sorry since he is that strong person he is going to again learn from his mistakes which he has and 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 be able to bounce back. And to all of that, I would start on the last note. Yes, his fans are going to have his back. This is something I noted on Twitter before he even issued his first apology. Most of his fans don't care. Most of his fans will blindly support him. There is a reason that he went up in subscribers since this controversy. What I'll say to the point of he made a mistake, he didn't intend harm. Intent doesn't really matter in this situation. Like you showed a ton of video footage of a dead person in your video. You put the dead person in your thumbnail. Intent doesn't matter. And I mean that in relation to the argument that he intended to raise awareness with this video. Even though the way he handles himself in the beginning of the video really seems to be like, this is crazy, you're never gonna see anything like this ever again. This is a Logan Paul original. That's why I truly hope that there is a moment of learning here and this isn't just PR spin and bullshit that we're about to see. Because having a history and covering stories like this, most likely we're gonna see one of two things happening, maybe a hybrid. One, Logan Paul coming back saying he learned his lesson and then throwing himself into maybe a charity or donation or doing something with like a Q 
new kid. This meant to show that he's trying to learn and be a better person. And or, and this would be kind of the Logan Paul spin to it, potentially, and maybe not right off the bat, but eventually getting to the point of Logan Paul being a victim. This because he lost his premium ads and using that as a way to push even harder to merch. But we'll see. Also, bonus points if in that video when he's being real with you, if they're sad or sympathetic music, double bonus points if it's just piano. But we'll see. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome. And the first bit of awesome we have today is we got an honest trailer for Get Out. Also in awesome and connected to Get Out, it was nominated for four Oscars. Then in other Oscar awesome, just because it's so funny and random and I, I personally believe it shouldn't be there. The Boss Baby is now an Oscar nominated film. I'm not saying The Boss Baby is emoji movie bad, but really? The Boss Baby nominated right next to Coco? Also in the same year that Lego Batman was a movie? You're crazy. But what is awesome about that is just seeing all of the comments on all of social media. Then we got a video from the Odd Ones Out and I feel like the last person to find out about this guy. I think I've maybe shared a video or two in the past that caught my eye, but I just, I marathoned through his channel last night. It's so good. He recently came out with a video called My Horrible Spelling. I think this is my new temporary favorite channel. We also got a fantastic trailer for the new God of War. It's coming out April 20th and if they if they do a good job between the relationship of you and your son, I just, yes. I'm not saying it's gonna give me the same feelings as The Last of Us, but it, even if it was a quarter, one fourth as effective, that would be a fantastic game. And if you wanna see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, anything at all, links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about this year's flu season. Maybe you've seen some of the horrifying headlines like flu outbreak, 100 people a week dying in US. This flu season keeps getting deadlier. And as of January 13th, all states except for Hawaii are reporting widespread flu activity. 32 of those states are also experiencing high influenza activity. Since October 1st, 2017, there have been 8,990 laboratory confirmed influenza associated hospitalizations. Now, just like most flu seasons, those over 65, those under five, they have the highest hospitalization rate. The CDC is reporting 30 pediatric deaths this season, and they estimate that in the last three weeks of 2017, there were 858 deaths. But also an important note there, in adults, influenza is often a contributing factor for death, and so the numbers on adults are all estimate. Also, despite the crazy headlines, an important thing to note is these numbers are not out of the ordinary. Reportedly, every year, the flu kills between 12,000 and 56,000 people. Also, each flu season, there is a dominant type of influenza. This year, it is H3N2, which is an influenza A virus. The current vaccine we have this year with everyone's flu shots is said to be around 30% effective. Also, a thing I want you to keep in mind is when I say this isn't the worst flu, I'm not like, because back in 1817, no, not like that. The flu season we would want to compare this to would be the 2014-2015 flu season. In that season, H3N2 was also dominant. And if we compare those two flu seasons, pediatric mortality rate is actually down from 2014-2015. That year, there were a total of 148 pediatric deaths. Also, in the last three weeks of 2014, it was estimated 993 people died from influenza compared to 858 this season. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying this isn't a big deal. I'm just saying we've been here before and it's always bad. Even Dr. Dan Jernigan of the CDC say, flu seasons every year are bad, so there's never a mild flu season. Adding this season is on that more severe side. Now, all of that said, we're still in the middle of the season as far as where this goes, time will tell. But if there's anything you get from the story, be safe. And, and I mean that in a variety of ways. One, it's not too late. You can still get the flu shot despite it only being 30% effective this year. And two, just everyday common practices, wash your fucking hands. The amount of times human beings touch their face in a day is astounding. And seeing as how human beings are just disgusting, coughing on stuff, grabbing things, it's just important to keep that in mind, wash your hands to limit your risk. And then let's talk about this horrifying story out of Germany. In Germany, there's a male nurse who's been in prison since 2008. In 2008, he was given seven and a half years for attempted murder stemming from his job. He was reportedly caught trying to give an overdose to a patient. Then in 2015, he was charged with six counts of murder, which led to a life sentence. During that trial, he also admitted to killing at least 30 other people. And the story around this is incredibly troubling. Unlike most serial killers, he didn't go out with a specific intent to kill someone. It was actually the opposite. He said he was bored and he was addicted to the feeling of resuscitating his patients and wanted to impress his colleagues. So he would inject his patients with a cocktail of drugs that would slow down their heart rate, slow down their breathing, and then attempt to revive them. And it's kind of shocking that he was able to do this for so long. During his tenure at Oldenburg Hospital, the amount of deaths during his shift doubled. Now eventually he was let go, but the hospital gave him a good recommendation when he applied to another hospital. Another hospital where he continued to do the same thing. Now there at Delmenhorst Hospital, he was actually caught injecting a patient, but the management there for the hospital reportedly didn't discipline him or report it to police for two days. And it's believed during those two days, he killed his final patient. And now the reason we're talking about this German nurse again is he has been charged with 97 more counts of murder. His confession in 2015 led investigators to exhume over 100 bodies. This to see if they could find evidence of the drugs the nurse would have used on them. And if he's found guilty of these other murders, it makes me think of two things. One, that would make him Germany's deadly 
likely a serial killer, and two, it also makes his reasoning for why he was doing this just not make sense. He said he was bored and he was doing this for praise, but deaths doubled under his watch. It looks like he killed far more people than he was able to resuscitate. It also makes me think, with such a large number, how is there not more outrage towards the hospitals? I'm not saying they're complicit, but it really looks like they were complacent. Would it be the first hospital having this nurse where deaths are doubling, but they still like let this person go, but they give them a recommendation? And the same situation happens with the new hospital, and then they actually see him doing something insane, but then still took days to do anything, and it looks like he killed another person during that time. And on that note, there are two charged with negligent homicide. This for failing to act properly, but it just it just seems like a next level failure. And there's really no out to that story. Sometimes the world is just a horrifying place filled with horrifying people. And then let's talk about this horrible situation coming out of Kentucky today. This morning at 7.59 a.m. local time, there was a shooting at Marshall County High School in Benton, Kentucky. First responders arrived at the scene at around 8.06 a.m. Early reports from police said that one victim had been pronounced dead. Multiple others were reported wounded, taken to local and regional hospitals, some by helicopter. Governor Matt Bevin then held a press conference where he said 19 individuals were being treated, also updating the death count. At this time, there are 19 individuals who have are being treated or have been treated for injuries. 14 of those are gunshot wounds. Five of those are non-gunshot wound related injuries. Of the 14 who have received gunshot wounds, two have passed away. One was a decedent at the scene. That student was a 15 year old female. A second student, also 15 years old, a male, passed away at the hospital. The student is in custody. Reportedly, he was apprehended at the scene of the crime. Authorities are saying he will be charged with murder and attempted murder, but details on that are still developing. And that's an important thing to note here. This is still a developing situation. We don't know motive. We don't know a lot of information. It's still coming in. This will also likely bring back the gun debate, not just because we had a school shooting here, but this is the second school shooting in the United States in two days. There was a school shooting yesterday in Italy, Texas. Luckily, no one was killed. One person was injured. As of right now, there's not much more to add here. It's kind of a wait and see as information comes out situation. So right now, and I know that it's just words, I, I do want to send my, my well wishes to those affected by this. I can't imagine the pain you're going through and I wish you didn't have this hurt. And just a note that I, I try to hit on whenever we have a horrible story like this is to, you never know what's gonna happen in life. You never have a guarantee that a person that you love will still be here tomorrow. There's no guarantee that you will be here tomorrow. So while you have the chance, let those you love know it. Say it, show it, live it. Because one day you or them won't be able to. And all we really have is the now, so embrace it. And I think that's the note that I want to try and end today's show on. And of course, like every Philip DeFranco show, I give you the news, my opinion, and I want to hear from you, whether it be the last story, the first story, anything in between. And remember, if you liked this video, you like what I try and do on this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss these daily videos, which actually, if you did miss the last Philip DeFranco show, you want to catch up, click or tap right there to watch that. Or if you want to watch the latest behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there to watch that. But that's it, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.